Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are here live in Indianapolis for the live version of the Larry County Radio Show and Telethons, the Child Support Telethon. Wait, is that? <laughs> no, this no, is this, this, this is FDIC. FDIC. I'm oh, sorry, FDIC. I'm sorry. It's that, that's next week. FDIC. Uh, but even though we don't have uh, the the guests we were going to have for the telethon, we do have. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Brian Zeitz, who's going to be joining us after we introduce our esteemed, yet sometimes humble, fearless leader. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Larry Conley. <laughs> that would be me. That would be you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks we'll... for that introduction. Sure. And thanks for bringing my personal business about that child support. Okay. Sorry, Sorry, we can edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's live. We no, can't. Right, yeah, we can't. It's too late now. Sorry. You know, so it's out there, you know. But uh, it's going to a good cause. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So it's all good. But no, uh, and we're, we're glad to be back. Mm -hmm. We've done a few of these over the years. Yeah. And, uh, it's always a fun time. It's just fun being back. I yeah. mean, the last few years has been, uh, you know, you got to alter it for this, you yeah. got to cancel it for that, you got to move it in the heat of the summer for that. It's just, it's just FDIC has kind of been just all over the in place, flux. like yeah. most of us and uh, most of our society during the pandemic. But glad to be back to some sense of normalcy. It mm -hmm. seems like things are going good so far. I think so, yeah. And, um, but anyway, um, we're going to talk about our <clears throat> personal leadership, some of that today. Mm -hmm. Also, we're going to talk to another leadership guru, which is um, this guy right here, Brian. Brian so, yeah, mm -hmm. right, right, right. Mm -hmm. guru. yeah, guru. And uh, I mean, he writes articles, and he's a, a big, big time guy in the ICFSI and uh, second in command out there in Kirkwood, Missouri, and uh, uh, presents all over the country. Um, and, and, and as I as I understand it, also an accomplished uh, a sandwich artist. Yes, 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 yes. yes. I make a sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> yes. And not only does he do sandwiches, soup. Oh. Uncle Larry was sick with the COVID back a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I guess he dropped off some stuff at the... At, it's I mean, he kind of threw it. He, he threw it on the porch, and I had to kind of <laughs> right, right, because he didn't want to be near me. But, 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 right, but, but whatever I was able to scrape off the porch was pretty good. Right, right. It's a concrete taste to it. So I mean, thanks for the thought. I just didn't like the delivery. You know? But nonetheless, it's a thought that counts. That's it's right. About soup and grape nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was some kind of uh, grain, urban, urban, yeah, yeah. urban soup, or whatever. But um, but anyway, another reason I brought uh, um, Chief Zeitz in is because, um, now I don't know if you remember this, but uh, last year, which is kind of a few months ago, really, when you think about it, mm -hmm. uh, we did the keynote for FDIC in 2021. Yeah, I think it went great. I mean, it was amazing. We can get some good feedback from each other. Oh, and then we'll ask Brian because he, you know, he, he always gives us his honest opinion. You know? Whether we want it or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then um, this morning we had Dan Shaw, right? Mm -hmm. Dan, Dan did a phenomenal job mm -hmm. in sharpening your axe. Mm -hmm. We like where he went with that. Um, tomorrow for the second um, day opening mm -hmm. will be Frank Viscuso. Oh, man. Man, mm -hmm. you don't be That's talking a treat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's going to step up because mm -hmm. he's going to lead. Mm -hmm. you, you see I what see I did what there? Yeah, yeah. Frank, uh, you know, not getting any royalties from that one, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just thought it ourselves. But anyway, uh, so we're talking all things uh, keynote, and since we couldn't get Frank, we decided to get no, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. But, uh, but seriously, uh, so maybe a few people now i know it's been officially announced but we're we're announcing officially here yeah we're breaking that, we're like tmz yeah yeah 2023 mm. guess who's doing the keynote no? who is it this guy what right, so yeah that's it yeah man i mean missouri I that last couple of years missouri's on the map killing the game yeah we're missouri doing. used to be that place where uh, we fly over you just fly over you know fly, like, over you fly over you know but now with gas the way it is, you got to stop. You got to stop and, 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 and pick us up and let us do <laughs> keynotes exactly. for you. you know? So there there's talent coming out of Missouri. Uh, uh, Brian and I have been um, talking about stuff like this, mm -hmm. not necessarily the keynote, but just 
you know, how can we get our message on the big stage at places like FDIC? Because, you know, we do a lot of um, busy work in our hometowns, me in the city of St. Louis and Bryan on the suburbs of Kirkwood, Missouri. So, um, but, you know, some of our local conversation is always how can we be better at home? Sure. And then how that can also be um, taken to the national scene and so we've been able to do a few things over the past couple of years and stay in touch and stay and we keep each other humble mm -hmm. you know people like man Zeit says to pay come back let's say little larry i just rocked it you know, like uh b we, we're going to white castle yeah right. so you just you know the, don't get too big you know mm -hmm. and he does the same thing mm -hmm. with me man they love comedy I'm like yeah larry yeah yeah mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to get some Emo's pizza. Right, exactly. take take down, yeah, we're going to take yeah, down yeah. the notch. You know? Here, eat this bologna sandwich right, you know, yeah. that your mother made <laughs> for you. Yeah, yeah, and the soup on the yeah. porch. Yeah. So it keeps us grounded, <clears throat> keeps each other accountable, but also um, gives us uh, what we need to go and take our mes message okay. national. You know? So we want to talk um, today about, um, you know, touch on some of the keynote stuff, Brian. I don't think he wants to let the cat too much out the bag because prefer wants, not to yeah but. he works he wants people to be able to come if they, if they hear it all here they won't show up next year Absolutely. be three people in the audience that would be yeah, bad we can't you know? have that. no yeah, so and it wouldn't so, be you two yeah right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> we would have heard it right We're sitting here, there right. eating sandwiches yeah. you know yeah. but uh but uh, but but the keynote you don't have to say what specifically is going to be about <clears throat> but pretty much the keynote is going to be an offspring of your beliefs and leadership in the first place so you know, for our audience there, you can kind of guess what, you know, get a flavor of what you might hear. Because people sure. knew, they knew when we did ours, they had an idea of what we might talk about. Right. Right. They might not know how we was going to do it in dynamic form, sure. but they knew, had an idea. So yeah. it wasn't a big secret. Like, these guys teach personal leadership, then we hmm. broke out with the old soft shoe right. on stage. It, it wasn't like that. That's just because the dance moves weren't ready. Folks. Yeah, we yeah, right, right. I thought you guys were going to do tap. We yeah, were, we were. We, were, we, were, we, were, we decided, but, no. Yeah, no, leave no, that to the Nicholas Brothers. Right, right. right. They're not tap. that good. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> last time I did, I called it a Charlie horse. No, it's it never was, been. No, no, it was embarrassing. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, so we're going to talk to our good friend Brian here. Perfect. And, um, and uh, but let's start out with this because I know Brian teaches, you, he, he taught the pre conference already. Mm -hmm. So you could tell us about that and tell us uh, what the pre conference was about. So you come to it next year. Number two, um, where where to get the idea of the inspiration to even come up with your um, leadership boot camp that you do and uh, and then you know where you see it going from here or sure why do you think it's necessary what what inspired you to say this is this needs to be said and I'm going to say it in this form and so you need to write any of that down yes can I write some <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I need right, a notepad right, all these right, questions right, right. like you know no, well, first, thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. You know, it is amazing to be back at FDIC in April in Indianapolis. Uh, you walk the halls, you see the people. It's uh, it's incredible um, seeing everyone out. Uh, yesterday, you're right, I did a, a four-hour uh, workshop uh, on keys to company officer success, which I love doing. Um, my current role, like I said, was, you know, I work in Kirkwood uh, as assistant chief out there. I've uh, been there for three years. Prior to that, though, I worked in another organization and I did 10 years as a company officer. And so even in my role now, I will tell you that you have the most influential role in the fire service as a company officer. Um, that true link between the administration and the firefighters. Um, and that's where my passion's at, right? So in the fire service, you know, Dan mentioned this morning, you know, it's never too late to make your mark and, and make your impact and move your organization forward. And I truly believe that you're never going to move an organization forward if the company officers aren't on board mm -hmm. and the company officers aren't doing what they need to be doing. Um, I, you know, I, I, not that I'm saying this, but that no one really cares that the fire chief shows up, but if the company officers aren't there, everybody notices. Right. And so that's kind of what, you know, I realized early on in my career as a company officer, the impact that that can and cannot be had uh, or could be had negatively or positively. So that kind of inspired me to take what I've learned, the experiences and, and opportunities. I was very fortunate to get a tremendous amount of opportunities, meeting people like you guys, talking to you guys, um, talking to people across the country. Um, I step aside the different things I've been afforded to do I felt like it was necessary to pay that forward mm. and so that's kind of what inspired me 
to take those lessons learned, both in my experiences, both from knowledge of other people and, and the experiences of others as well, mm-hmm. and the training that I was afforded and put that into a package that, that you could find, right? Because if you, if you think about it, right, company officers, I'm going to test for a company officer position. Great. I'll get the prerequisites and I test and then I'm, su- I'm successful. And then it's like, great. Now you got the job. Mm-hmm. What a, so this whole boot camp is everything you learn outside of the fire officer one and two cert- certifications. Mm-hmm. Good stuff to have, but this was more real world, real life experiences, the stuff they don't teach in the books. Right. Um, and that's, so that's, that's what it's all about for me, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. I still, to this day, I tell uh, yesterday class, your company officer, you know, you, you have the most influential position. You're right. That's true, um, because the company officer has to balance the um, the express mission of the department and 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 still um, manage and lead the crew. And you got to hear from both ends. Yep. The crew maybe ah, why we got to do that, but management like you better do it because we need some accountability. And, uh, and like you said, if the chief does it, you're going to listen to a chief out of respect, but will you really continue to follow through? And that's usually the company officer's job to make sure that um, that balance is kept, Yep. you know, because you, you still boots on the ground with your, with your guys, you know, your yells and, and your whole um, fire department family. And with that being the case, they, they trust you more because the relationship is more intimate than your chief who, you know, stops by for, you know, the reasons they stop by or, you know, they, they more have an administrative tone. So you need to balance those two. More important to understand that efficiency and effectiveness piece. Yep. Right. Together Most, definitely. Officer, Most definitely. So, um, so uh, I know a lot of people aspire to rise up as far as they can in the fire service, but, um, don't look at the company officer as a stepping stone, mm-hmm. you know, because some some people are just like, hey, I'm a captain and I'm happy being a captain because mm-hmm. you get the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to still mix it up with your crew, but the same token, you know, you get to um, provide direction and leadership and um, you get your own room. That's, that's it. That's even mm-hmm. better. Oh, well, there you that's, uh, you know, having a room is nice. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a, so that's a common phrase when you're in the fire service, is, you know, is, you know, you ask somebody, hey, you know, where do you work? And they're like, I work at X. Oh, what's your position? Well, I'm just. Yeah. And you should never just anything. You know, if you're, you, you know, if you're the fire chief, no one says I'm just the fire chief. Right. right? right. And if you're the new firefighter, you're not just the firefighter. Right. So, you know, own your position, be proud of your position. Don't, you know, discount what you provide to your organization at sure. whatever level it is. I always tell, you know, uh, when I do classes, I'll start. I'm like, hey, who's the most important person in the room? And they'll laugh. I'm like, well, it's got to be me, right? I got the clicker. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, I'm like, we all, we're all we all important. Yeah. And it's the same thing in a fire service. You know, the as we go, everybody has responsibilities at different levels, mm-hmm. but we all provide value to that organization. And if we don't do that, then we're going to be find ourselves running in circles mm-hmm. as an organization. So, and a lot of people discount their own value, yeah. you know, unfortunately. And, you know, you guys see it through personal leadership lessons. You guys do awesome program, you know, people that discount the value they provide. Um, you know, that's a huge thing. I always ask the question. So like, you know, people are always like, Hey, when's the best time to be in a firehouse? Right. And most of us always say it's after fire. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, when everybody's like, Oh, and I ask them like, so what's, so why is that? Why is that the best time? And, you know, typical answers right oh because we broke stuff or hey we put the fire out mm-hmm. or something but i said if you drill down into that and speaking to you guys you guys know this but if you drill down into that's because you were provided the opportunity to provide value to yourself to your company to your organization and your community right that's when morale's high yeah. and so you know that's something we got to think about as as you know leaders in our industry and leaders in our organizations is how do we make sure that our that our members feel valued and are afforded opportunities to provide value mm-hmm. you know um, you, you hit on the point about the value, and David, when we teach our class, we, we talk a lot about status assignment and the value of no matter where you are um, on, that, on that team, that your status assignment has to be understood and high first by yourself, and then have it respected and high from those you work with. So David, you want to kind of touch on the value of why keeping a high status, maintaining it personally, and then um, 
creating a team culture to have high status to kind of support what uh, Brian was just talking about. Absolutely. Um, you know, like like Brian is saying that everybody in the organization makes the organization great. And so, you know, you hear that you're only as uh, strong as your weakest link. But everybody has to first treat themselves with high status and then make sure they're treating others with high status. And in that sense, you have what would be considered an equal high status assignment um, sort of relationship or system within the organization. And when you have that, it, it gives birth to uh, high levels of trust, high levels of creativity, um, gives birth to uh, a lot of great synergy and things like that. You can have good uh, interpersonal relationships or interdependent realities, which is what uh, fire teams and fire uh, departments are. Uh, you can't have that operating well and at optimum when there is a disparity of status, meaning you uh, treat somebody else with low status and your status is high, or you treat them with high status and your status is low. And I always challenge people to name a relationship that they uh, can identify where there was uh, a difference in status assignments one way or the other, and that relationship was healthy and proactive and, and productive. Mm. I can never think of one in my life, yep. uh, personally or professionally. And so if you're respecting the fact that though you guys may not be able to do a particular skill that I have as well as I, I can, there are things that you can do and that you bring to the table that I don't do as well, but all of us together now elevate the organization uh, in a way that none of us would be able to do individually. So you gotta have uh, the thinking that I'm not just like uh, Chief was saying, I'm not just a captain, I'm not just a private, I'm not just a lieutenant or what have you. I am a valued member of the organization. Whatever my contribution is, is valuable. And so, you know, that's, that's the important thing there. Uh, just quickly forward, non-negotiable rules of status. Uh, and, and people are watching you whenever you are dealing with somebody and raising or lowering their status and exhibiting what you think of your own status by virtue of how you treat the others. Four rules are whenever you lower someone or something status, you lower your own in the eyes of others. Whenever you raise someone or something status, you raise your own in the eyes of others. It's the second one. The third one is whenever you raise or lower someone's status, you affect the status of not only yourself, but the entire organization because people just look and say, that's firefighters or that's firefighters from Kirkwood or St. Louis City. But the last uh, non-negotiable rule is that growth can only occur. Uh, and I'll also add to that positive interactive uh, relationships uh, can only occur when everybody is operating at an equal high status level. Mm -hmm. Some, um, <clears throat> And I know, Brian, you're the kind of person to practice what you preach. Um, as the assistant chief in Kirkwood, and I know we know that you're fire chief, and um, he's, he's okay. He, he, so, um, he does some of that. This, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he does, does something, yeah, yeah. Some, something about uh, suburban fire tactics. But oh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't right. know about that. I'm no. going to write a book that counted that called Urban Fire Tactics. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> bestseller. Yeah, so, you know. Oh. Uh, Larry Blacknail. That's right. oh, my oh, pen name, oh, Silvernail. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway mm -hmm. no, shout out to Jim Silvernail, Chief mm -hmm. Jim Silvernail, the, yep. the fearless leader of the Kirkwood Fire, Missouri Fire Department. And a good friend. Um, too, and too. And a, yeah, good friend. Solid guy. Uh, but and he's kind of a big deal. I think so. Uh, I will say this. Like, I'm very fortunate to, uh, to work under his command. Like mm -hmm. I said, he's a uh, you speak of people that, you know, talk to talk, walk to walk. Right. And so, you know, what he advocates for in the fire department mm -hmm. and he advocates for in his teachings and he advocates for in his book and he, he advocates for in the way he, he holds himself and he handles himself and he talks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he does all those things. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's, it's nice and it's refreshing to work, uh, under someone like that. Yeah. Right. And, you know, he's a true believer in partnerships. I mean, he, you know, and everything we do, uh, you know, what's your opinion on things? What are your thoughts? Uh, mutual respect. Uh, you know, we've been friends with the guy for 20 years. He was in my wedding. Um, but at the end of the day, I also know he's the fire chief, right? Mm -hmm. So like his decision's final and I gotta, I gotta, you know, go with that. And mm -hmm. so, you know, but it's, uh, it's very refreshing, um, to work in that environment. Right. Sure. So, um, 
so yeah I'm, I'm i'm very very fortunate you know now in in you all and, and since you all work well together i know jim believes a lot of the stuff we talked about we've had him on the show before not to mention a lot of our informal conversations when we have lunch and whatnot um, sometimes these things come up um are there any um examples of of um, how you all keep status assignment high in your department that um that you in your opinion makes it um easier for people to work because i mean it's easy for you to work for chief silvernail um and so i can imagine you know you pass the same blessings down to people who work in for you and and also company offices and subordinates you know in that regard sure so how um are there any actionable um, ways that you can use as an example that says um, we do this and we the reason we do this is because it keeps buy-in and positive uh, a positive work environment for all of our firefighters yeah so you know a couple come to my head um, just kind of off the cuff right so uh, people want opportunities um, to be part of the organization right they want to to that value point they want to feel part of the organization. So how do you feel part of the organization? It's not just coming in and collecting a time card and doing your 24, 40 hour shift and going home. You know, they have to have an input in their in their department. So you see this goofy thing I'm wearing, right? So mm -hmm. this green pullover, we never had swag uniforms or anything at Kirkwood. Like you can wear off duty, show your pride for your organization. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things we did when I first got there. So we, you know, we put out this giant order of, hey, can we get some different apparel? And so um, not to wear on duty, but sure. to show our pride for our organization off duty, like, you know, I'm, I'm proud Kirkwood firefighter. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very proud of being the position I am with that organization. It's a great organization, but uh, with great men and women. So I want that same feeling that I have exposed mm -hmm. into, the, into the membership. So that's one of the things, right? So that's a non-functional part of our job. Functionally, uh, we've created a lot of committees that provide opportunity for people to have a say in their organization. So um, we have an operations committee. How do we operate as a fire department? By definition, I'm the operations and training chief. So it all ends and dies with me, but it shouldn't, right? I should, I should ask input. Like, hey, what do you guys think about this? You guys are the people doing the job. And so, you know, we've we started the operations committee, the training committee. We have a health and fitness committee now. And so we're getting people that are, you know, to your point, the strengths, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody might have strengths in the training, and that's where they really their strong point is. So now they can have a say in the organization and influence the direction of our training programs mm -hmm. and feel like, hey, I'm contributing more than just punching a time clock. I'm a part of this organization. Right. So so th those are some of the small things. Um, you know, we've created some acting officer programs, some relief engineer programs. Uh, you know, we're looking at some new positions for uh, some advanced leadership positions with, you know, some new uh, with some creation of some positions. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, that's the thing is you, you don't ever want to become a stagnant organization, not that we were, sure. but you also want to make sure that you're just because you're, you know, it's easy to say, hey, we're a progressive organization. You can say that all day long, but if your people aren't bought into it and the people aren't being progressive, then it's just title only right. and you don't want to be that organization. Right. So good deal. Um, you said something I was thinking when you were talking. When you That's scary. Yeah, That's scary. Is. That's scary. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Heimer, Mr. Altheimer, uh, <laughs> to the memory bank, uh, Mr. Yeah. Austin, Austin Heimer. Mm. <laughs> but um, I was going to say that traditionally, when I first came on the job 30 years ago, it's it felt like, I'm not saying that people actually sat in planning meetings and said it, but it felt like there was more of an authoritative type of um, culture that they never necessarily turned off it was like you know i'm, I'm the chief I'm, i know everything you're the private or you got this much time on you really don't know a lot so shut up and wait till i tell you to do whatever and that always bothered me not so much that i want to disrespect time on and experience but bothered me that you felt like that um your status was better mm -hmm. than mine and not, i didn't have a voice at all. And um, of course, through um, experience and study and then developing this program, we um, we were able to identify, you know, a better way of, uh, of improving 
you know, those communications. Absolutely. But I think what happens is that if we continue to operate in that authoritative sense that that's, that's the hard wire, how you hardwire, and you're kind of diminishing, diminishing people's status, you don't realize you're not really strengthening an organization, mm -hmm. you know, if you keep in certain people at bay. Because sometimes when people say, I got time on, you just look enough to sign up before I did, right. but that don't make you better than I. Sure. And then when I hear this, like fingernails on the chalkboard to me, especially if that's all you got to offer, mm -hmm. I got time on, or what have you done late, don't matter, got time on, you need to learn this, you need to learn that, and don't realize that the train then kind of moved down the track a little bit, you know. Um, do you see um, your vision and investment in um, positive status assignment and recognizing the importance of everybody. Do you see that as an important variable in your succession planning for your department? Yeah, I, you know, 100%, uh, you know, you have to, right? So succession planning in the fire service is, uh, is absolutely critical. Um, and I think too, that we have to understand succession planning, not to say that this is right or wrong. Uh, I don't want to call anybody out, but you know, sometimes we always would think like, hey, if I'm a good firefighter, I'm a good captain. That mm -hmm. captain's going to be a good battalion chief. That battalion chief's going to be a good deputy chief. That deputy chief's going to make a good assistant chief and then can make a good fire chief. I think that some of the problems with that thought process is from a leadership perspective, you look at conceptual or, you know, conceptual, interpersonal, and technical leadership of those three. As you go up in an organization, those have to change, right? Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the technical leadership skills of a new firefighter, that's great because that's what they need to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't care that my fire chief can pull a hose line technically. I care that he sees the 30,000 foot view of what this organization is doing. So when we look at succession planning and to your point of, you know, how do we, you know, with, with the status of, of our people and making sure that they're providing positive impact, um, that's what we have to also look at too when we develop them is, okay, you know, here's the skill set of this job, mm -hmm. you know, because I think a lot of times we do a somewhat poor job of really explaining what that job is. Mm -hmm. And then we go for it and we're like, man, I don't have that skill set or that and much less skill set, must let more mm -hmm. inner quality traits to be able to do that effectively. Right. So um, I probably circled around and answer your question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, <laughs> you did. That yeah. is an answer. Yeah, no. and, uh, and it's interesting too, because I, I think, because we had established a, a sort of hierarchy with regard to the rank, um, we had a, not to fault anybody, but kind of just a lazy way of saying, well, that's going to be leadership. Mm -hmm. Then it saves us from having to really do the work of developing these people for these particular mm -hmm. jobs, you know, and uh, in coaching and working with people on leadership in various industries, one of the common things that I find is that they don't necessarily train people for the level that they are raising them to. They say, well, you've been a good middle manager. Now we'll reward you for that by taking you to upper management. But like Chief is saying, the entire necessary skill set to be successful at this level has changed. Hmm. Everything you have to do here, or most of it, is now different than what you, so you thrived here, but you'll suffer mm -hmm. here. So in that now, the good thing about the high status assignments on the way up is it does give people uh, the confidence to say, my ideas are valuable, I'm valuable, and I'm in an organization that is willing to share those ideas. Mm -hmm. So as I'm going up, and I knew I had that culture rising, now when I'm in this senior management position, I may be in a place where I say, hey, guys, I don't know this. Mm -hmm. So can you help me with number one, what do you need? Number two, how I might be able to do this better if I identify the fact that you're better at it. Mm -hmm. So if you have some common leadership status assignments from private on up, even what you don't know when you get into senior leadership, you're in a position to be able to go get it. And that's yeah. really kind of the definition of genius and brilliance anyway. Like mm -hmm. it, it, part of it is what knowledge you have, yeah. but the other part of it is having the knowledge and the wherewithal to go get somebody who has greater knowledge sure. than you. Yeah. And, and so that's the, the some of the most successful CEOs and even fire chiefs and everything else that you see are people who build a great team around them 
of people who are smarter in these particular areas uh, than them. So I, I don't think you circle around at all. Mm -hmm. I think you kind of hit it on the head, yeah. So, uh, so just a couple things on that, Andy, is you do see that sometimes in, you know, in, in organizations that tend to fail, mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, it, it could be a fire service, it could be a, a company. As I said, you know, I've been friends with the fire chief for 20 years, but he brought me in for my skill sets and because of what I could do to the organization, and I'm mm -hmm. held to that standard. Mm -hmm. You see certain organizations that promote just their buddies yeah. and, and, and then they're surrounded with this party team because <laughs> no one's going to, no one's intimidated or is going to intimidate the, the boss because they're all his buddies and they're quote weaker, right? Mm -hmm. Those organizations don't tend to strive in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, and then I know it's something that you guys have taught because I've taken your class a couple of times and it's awesome um, is the idea of empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if I empower these people, you know, that work with me, um, you know, and, and my job is to support them in their mission of, of daily operations and emergency response and training. If I empower them, then if they're successful, the organization is successful. Mm -hmm. If they're not successful, then we fix that mm -hmm. and we make them successful mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, that's what makes the organization successful. Right. And so it prepares them then for those bigger things of, you know, the chief level, you know, if I empower them to like with projects and things and say, hey, this project, even if they're not successful at it initially, we work through those things to make them successful because now they own that project. Mm -hmm. And then we reward that ownership as an organization because we're, we're better, but then they're successful in the eyes of the organization, that leadership is successful, which is a win, win, win all the way around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, um, I was going to say also that um, when you truly drill down and not just saying, you know, I got to, I got to do this leadership thing, get to know my people. And, and you kind of have this broad stroke attitude about it and not really trying to um, get to know the individuals, get to know who might be on the radar to, to take certain. Um, our mother always say all the time that, uh, especially like when she was talking about raising children, um, you try to look to where maybe that child leans mm -hmm. and you look for where the child leans if it's something um, you then you want to make them play baseball if they got to lean toward football mm -hmm. or you want to make them do something um, vocational if they tend to be more academic or you know that kind of my two sons are built like that one is very analytical very you know you know, stupid when it comes to yeah. figures and things like that. And then one of them is more vocational. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not going to. So that doesn't make one smarter than another. They just lean into what. So when, I, when I'm able to comfortably help them comfortably lean into what their skill set is, mm -hmm. then what that does is help um, them um, be better at what they will, like I said, what they lean into. And um, so that being the case, what, what I'm saying is that um, you do the same thing with your uh, with the people that you work with. If yeah. you talk about leadership and succession planning, is it doesn't do me any good to say all captains need to go through this or all sure. people need to do this particular technical training or all people need to do this. Um, if you get to know your organization, and I know sometimes it's not that easy because, I mean, when we talk Kirkwood, Kirkwood is a nice size organization, but it's not super huge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, St. Louis is a little bigger. And yeah. we'll go to New York or LA. Sure. It'll be so maybe that, but maybe if you create that culture that at each level, everyone gets to know their, their um, crews or their subordinates, so to speak at that level, then they can um, help identify what you lean to and then help <clears throat> develop help you develop a plan if that's uh, something that you want to do so you can be more be stronger in the succession planning because i think when you don't address it or you don't have a game plan or you have this one size fits all or you have this authoritative mentality that you know we're going to be the chief forever you and you and <clears throat> chief silver are not going to be the chief forever so you need to be looking down the road well, who who, who's up and coming that probably can carry the yeah. torch? You know, if you don't have to carry the torch, and I know sometimes things are um, appointed or whatever like that, but even if you have new appointed chiefs, the, the meat of the organization still has to work in order for 
the organization to run great. And so that's why having that, um, that intentional succession planning as dynamic as may have to be in identifying who is, the core is the status assignment. The core is to value in everyone in that organization. And when you do, it creates a culture that people are ready to step up. You know, when you start thinking like, who could be like, let me do, 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 knock on your door. And like, who is that? Hey, it's me. Boom, I just finished this, this, this course. I just took initiative to do this. So I went here, I was the FDIC, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, because the culture has been created in that. Does that well, make sense? And none of us are bigger than our organizations. Right. right. I mean, no matter what you're, you know, you, you know, other than Larry being with, you know, the glue, mm -hmm. I mean, because the glue just ain't the glue without Larry. <laughs> uh, but none of us are bigger than an organization. And so it's only a detriment to us if we don't, if we don't plan for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you know, uh, the, today, you know, we, we listened to uh, Chief Shaw talk about in his uh, speech, mm -hmm. you know, his keynote, uh, uh, you know, we will all die. Mm -hmm. and at some point we'll all die and so it's only a matter of what you do at that time and we have to understand that is our organizations will live long past us yes. you know yes. kirkwood fire department will be there long after i'm dead yeah. and if you know my my goal is that the kirkwood fire department when i retire and dead and hopefully 50 years from now when somebody's talking about kirkwood fire department like oh that chief says he made a difference here you know mm -hmm. things you know back in the day he was kind of thinking that and this and we might have thought he was crazy, but you know, uh, it, it's it worked out, you mm -hmm. know. So, and, and I think that's what we all strive for, yeah. if you will, um, or at least look at. And mm -hmm. you know, we have to understand that that none of us, no matter the size of your organization, the rank you hold, are bigger than our organizations, and none of us are bigger than the fire service. No, no. I think no. what it comes down to is what kind of vision you have for that organization, for that you know, <clears throat> for that organization now and moving forward, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, how you empower your people to buy into that that vision and do what they can to move that forward too. So even as your succession plan moves through, it's just an extension of mm -hmm. the vision, the crystallized vision that you had, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, from the beginning. And so then, even in bigger organizations, like you were saying, you don't have to know everybody, but you can know the people who are your direct reports. Yeah. They know they're in that, that culture of knowing where everybody fits very well up under there is a thing that will end up building from the yeah. ground up mm -hmm. to create this sort of synergistic organization that moves that in vision into the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. You got to have a vision, a visionary, and people to buy into it. And, and like you said, have people understand that the organization of fire service is bigger than them, and then they won't be. Um, they, they'll, they'll develop themselves um, to the best they can be because they know that developing that from the inside out helps not only them, they but helps the organization as well. Yeah. It's not but it's happening. real, it's not ego-driven. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's for the organization. Yeah. You know, exactly. We're part of that, and that's bigger than any of us. Right. Exactly. And yeah. that's why I never understood, like I said, when I first came on the job, how this whole, um, you know, you're nothing but a new new person yeah. and and you know shut up don't say anything and, and whatever the case may be um, is this person has been trained in the academy you know not, and like i said experience is going to make you better definitely mm -hmm. and some of the stuff we learn in the academy will be more academic because experience maybe even help you reduce some of that but what i'm trying to say is that when you when you double down on a person like they're reducing their status. This person at this point is, for lack of a better way to put it, licensed and equipped to maybe have to save your life because they signed up to be a firefighter. So what good does it do to beat them down? Yeah. Beat that spirit down. You know, I, I understand the whole traditional culture of earn your keep. Mm -hmm. I'll never want to get away from the elements of that because it's you know just like a lot of times something new guy but why i gotta clean the toilet well the fire chief cleaned the toilet at one time i still clean the i toilet. clean the toilet you know what I'm <laughs> i still if i walk past I do like frank Piscuso, so i don't walk past the problem yep. that i can solve so if i walk past i'm like hey you might need to clean this toilet i just the brush is there the bleach is there i put the rubber gloves on to get and now they're gonna run in what are you doing cat 
you know, yeah, I'm yeah, good. I, got this. I got this. I'm, I'm clean it, and, and then I'm fix you something to eat. No, but, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying is, but but the point I'm trying to make is that that's because I don't, I'm not um, elevating my status and believing that I can't still do it. But for the respect of the job and respect of people, now what I found is that there there ran there ran a period of time where all people were was I got time on. All they did was show up, and then they were expecting the same respect. What I understood even better is that the ones who got the true organic respect were the ones who did say, I got it. You say, give me that. I'll do it for you, opposed to, hey, kid, do this because you're a new mm -hmm. kind of deal. There still needs to be a certain balance of that. Another thing I want to bring up, too, that I almost forgot, when we're talking about the or, or but they had <laughs> right there. Authoritative. Authoritative. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. There you go. Authoritative. Authoritative. You know. Mm -hmm. Buffering. Those got two. Well, he's the back. Guys. I'm back. I'm back. back. Holy cow. Buffering. Must have believed. Yeah. That was the internet. Authoritative. Sorry. Authoritative. <laughs> Low, Low bad rolling. connection. <laughs> what is my name? Right. No. Right. No. Authoritative leadership. On the fire ground, there needs to be a third leadership. Absolutely. I'm not trying to make this a kumbaya moment, like throw that out because mm -hmm. no. But what I found has worked for me is that when I take care of business in the firehouse with this proper status assignment, when I take care of business and making sure we're trained to the standard that we need to perform in the street, then even though it's authoritative, I I don't have to express that yelling, screaming, belittling, reducing people's status in the process. Yeah, there is game time voice on the fire ground sure. different than in the firehouse. So you might, you know, hear me raise my voice for the sense of the urgency of it, but not, it's not motivated mm -hmm. by reducing who you are. I would so say when that, we yeah. do that, so when we do that, it works for a better environment for us. And I sit around and watch other people yell and scream at their people. I'm like, you know, um, you know, what's the, why? But that's because they never graduated from what we were, what I was taught, whether it was intentionally or just by example, that yelling and screaming, belittling and, and saying you only can talk when I tell you to talk kind of why? leadership yeah. was not going to be um, effective long-term. But do you want to still think about this though? So I say this in the classes, we, you know, very little leadership is displayed on the fire ground and people are like, Oh my gosh, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I say, think about it. We don't, we don't lead a fire ground. We manage a fire scene. Yeah. And so you, you, you lead in the firehouse to manage a fire ground. Mm -hmm. And that's where the leadership and management come together mm -hmm. is, you know, you're doing, and you, we always like to compare ourselves to the military. Tactically military assets are deployed. Mm -hmm. And those people in the military believe that the mission because of the things that are said and the things that happen in, at the base and the things that are told by their, their commanding officers prior to actually ever going to battle. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to battle, they believe that those officers have their best interest in mind mm -hmm. to accomplish the mission. Mm -hmm. Very little leadership is played. Now, there's some incidents in, in, that have occurred in the fire service with some tragedies and things where there was probably sure. exemplary leadership that mm -hmm. was displayed. But for the most part, mm -hmm. most of our fire grounds are managed. Mm -hmm. I don't get to say, well, you know, your engine one and your engine two and engine one is much better than engine two, obviously <laughs> much better looking, obviously. Yeah, nothing else. Of course. Yeah. But if engine, if engine one shows up first, I don't get to say, hold on, don't pull the hose. I got to wait for engine two because you're better looking dude. Right. No, I, I say you do this, you do that. And everybody does it because of everything we've done prior to in a firehouse mm -hmm. to with our leadership that people trust us because we've empowered them. We, mm -hmm. we know that we know they, we got their backs. They got our backs. And that we're going to do the right stuff, and and that's how it should come together, right? I mean, ideally. Yeah. So now you can't have episodic relationships at the firehouse. Yeah. Episodic on the scene, and then expect long term. Yes. That you're going to have success. Somebody's going to be uh, get hurt. Yeah. Um, one way or physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever. Right. And just to say, suck it up, Buttercup is not. It doesn't work anymore. It does. Yeah, Especially if their name is not Buttercup. Especially but, if their name's not Buttercup. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> The thing that I hear both of you saying and what we talk about all the time is just the balance. Yeah. The, you people want to a and lot of times have, work. <laughs> yeah, they, they always want to have uh, the authoritative thing because the ego's taking over or whatever in some sense. So, or they just don't know 
<clears throat> how to be effective leaders in the you know the time in these other times and then sometimes you have that you know more leadership piece without the recognition of the hierarchy and you mm -hmm. got to have balance mm -hmm. uh in all of it and recognize and exercise all of it and one feeds the other very well so as we start yeah. to wrap up um we only got a couple of minutes left um you sure you want to give us a sneak peek of what they expect hints. next year? Man, yeah. So, you know. A little uh, tease. little tease. little tease. So, yeah, increase the, you know, the, 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 the 10,000 people. Yeah. Sure, the, you know? Who knows, right? No. I mean, you know, it's possible. No, I, you know, it, when I was given the uh, opportunity, I to maybe do this keynote in 2023 when Chief Halt called, you know, I started thinking, talking to people and asking. And, you know, the, the thing, to your point, kept coming in my head was this balance. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, without giving it out, you know, I think, uh, Hopefully I'll uh, have a message about that and how, uh, you know, we can, we can use that idea of balance in our lives, both for our, our professional careers and our personal lives to uh, find success in both. Because, you know, I think a lot of times in the fire service, uh, we accumulate, we achieve, we, we think we achieve success at the detriment of something else, mm -hmm. personal lives, family lives, uh, relationships. Um, and vice versa, right? We, we detrimental our career because we use the excuse of whatever. So um, yeah, that's kind of what it's going to be about. Uh, okay. Looking forward to it, you know, still uh, kind of processing a few things through it, but um, that's kind of the idea, you yeah, know? It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yep. We're going to be sitting in the front row and making nice. faces and all throwing stuff. tomatoes. I, yeah, I right, was right. just going to say, yeah, well, right. it's not about a farmer's market. Tomatoes, are, rotten tomatoes, much better than hard apples. I appreciate that. Right, right, right. Right. So because we care about you. Thank yeah, you. Thank care. you. Thank you. We'll thank throw you. tomatoes, but what we won't do is come up and slap you. We won't. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you get a fruit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Fruit, fruit and vegetables. But <laughs> might throw a sandwich up there. Right. Well, <laughs> The get wait mom, six years for yeah, get mom. mom get mom to make you a sandwich and throw a sandwich up there. There you go. Or well, throw some soup at you. you know, sure. Like you did, yeah, yeah. You know. Well, thank you for hanging well, thanks out. For, thanks for thanks for having me out, fellas. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. It's always you. good hanging with you guys as always. Pleasure. And uh I think um hopefully we, we dropped enough little nuggets that for you to think about. Um you know, for people just getting their career started, if you've been here for a minute and if you are um, you know, super experienced, hopefully. You got something because you're never too old to change and new people um, going forward, um, you know, take some of this and and go forward. And maybe we can bridge the gap and continue to make um, the fire service the best we can. So uh, we try to do that with our glue personal leadership program. Check us out. Uh, www.glutenationldc.com. And then we'll be here tomorrow from 1030 to whoever the hour and 45 minutes is. <laughs> But we started at 10 30 and uh, 12 15. 12 15, what David said. And uh, we'll Eastern, be, time. <laughs> East, Eastern time. Eastern yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be at the uh, Lucas um, in the Lucas, Lucas Stadium, stadium um, room one and two over there. Um, we went to the stadium this morning, thought this is the, they said Lucas. We said, man, they really expect a big, but the they said, no, no. Uh, it was. One of these meeting it's rooms. A little so said, smaller than okay, a little smaller than what we planned. So I think we could be we'll be all right. You know, so perfect. But one day we, we might build a stadium like the Colts. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great FDIC 2022. See you next year. And um see and see you throughout the week. Yep. All right. <laughs>